In this short video, we're going to see how we can use matrices to perform differentiation and integration. Now we've looked at this example basis several times before, and we said that the differentiation transformation, just taking the derivative, is actually an operator on the span of uh, these three functions. And just to verify that, we can see that if I take the derivative of each of these three functions, they are actually, or the derivative is actually a linear combination of the functions in our set B. So that tells us that the D is a, an operator on the particular subspace. So not only that, by looking at the coefficients on the basis functions, then I can write out what the coordinate vectors are using the set B as a basis. And so just as a reminder, uh, since we write it in order with x squared, then x, and then just plain old e to the negative 3x, um, we want to write the coefficient on x squared e to the negative 3x in the first coordinate. The second coordinate has the coefficient on x e to the negative 3x, and the third coordinate is the coefficient on e to the negative 3x. And so that's why the uh, coordinate vector for d of x squared e to the negative 3x is negative 3, then positive 2, then 0, because there is no term with just e to the negative 3x. And the same idea when we take the derivative of x e to the negative 3x, uh, we get a uh, e to the negative 3x, so now we do have a term with e to the negative 3x, time, I'm sorry, and then negative 3x e to the negative 3x, so there's no x squared, that's why we have a 0 in the first coordinate, then negative 3 in the second coordinate, and 1 in the third coordinate. And when I take the derivative of e to the negative 3x, I only get a multiple of e to the negative 3x. So if I place those columns in order, I'll get the matrix um, representation of the differential operator on this subspace w using the basis b. Now, taking the second derivative just means applying the derivative twice, uh, which would mean the d squared operator and the matrix representation of applying the derivative twice would just be the square of the matrix of just applying the derivative. So we go ahead and form the matrix matrix multiplication of the matrix representation of d. We square that we get this matrix here. And we can use that matrix then to calculate the second derivative of a function, which is a linear combination of the functions in our set B. And so we'll just need its coordinate vector. So we have an 8x squared e to the negative 3x. So we expect 8 to be the first component, negative 5x e to the negative 3x, so negative 5 would be the second component, and then plus 9 times just e to the negative 3x, that should be the third component. So 8, negative 5, positive 9. Just perform the matrix vector multiply, and I get components 72, negative 144, and 127. So those are the coefficients of the second derivative. So 72 will be the coefficient on x squared e to the negative 3x, then a minus 141x e to the negative 3x, and finally plus 127e to the negative 3x. Now we're going to try to do the inverse operation, which would be integration, or finding the antiderivative. And so here we have, we want to find the uh, indefinite integral of a function negative 6 e to the negative 4t cosine 3t and negative 2 e to the negative 4t sine of 3t. So that's a linear combination 
of the two functions e to the negative 4t cosine 3t and e to the negative 4t sine of 3t. Let's just verify that the differential uh, transformation is an operator on the span of our set B. So what I'll do is first take the derivative of e to the negative 4t cosine 3t and I see that is a linear combination of our functions in B with coefficients negative 4 and negative 3. So its coordinate vector would have components negative 4 and negative 3. And now taking the derivative of e to the negative 4t sine of 3t, again I get a linear combination of functions in b. And uh, remember the cos, the one that has the cosine comes first. So uh, even though I wrote this as negative 4 e to the negative 4t sine of 3t plus 3 e to the negative 4t cosine of 3t, I'm going to have to put the plus 3 first, that goes on the cosine, and the negative 4 as the second component in the coordinate vector. And then if I place those vectors as columns, remember columns. Columns in our, we'll get the matrix representation then with column, first column, negative 4, negative 3, second column, 3, negative 4. That's the matrix representation of the differential operator in the basis B for the span of B. And we don't need to do anything uh, fancy to calculate the inverse. We have a formula for our 2 by 2 matrix. So we'll go ahead and use that formula and get the uh, inverse. Now this inverse should do the opposite of taking the derivative, so it should be an antiderivative operator or help us find the definite integral or indefinite integral. Now the integrand was negative 6 e to the negative 4 t cosine 3 t minus 2 e to the negative 4 t sine of 3 t. That's the function we want the antiderivative of. So it's component vector would be negative 6, negative 2. So we'll just multiply the inverse times that component vector, negative 6, negative 2. And what comes out of that should be the coefficients for the antiderivative. And so I can just place, I'll factor out the, the 1 fifth to make it simple, but I'll write 6 then on the uh, e to the negative 14 cosine 3t and negative 2 will be the coefficient on e to the negative 4t sine of 3t. In our last example here we're going to have to do a little bit more work because the idea is we're trying to find a set B where the differential transformation is an operator on the span of that set. Well if I look at the functions that are in the integrand here. There's only two functions, really. It's a linear combination of e to the negative 4t sine squared 3t and e to the negative 4t sine of 3t cosine 3t. If I take the derivative of the first function, if I take the derivative of e to the negative 4t sine squared 3t, I will get a linear combination of those two functions. But if I take the derivative of e to the negative 4t sine of 3t cosine 3t, I have to actually use the product rule twice in addition to the chain rule, I'm going to see that that derivative is actually a linear combination of three functions. We have a negative 4e to the negative 4t sine of 3t cosine 3t, which is fine. We already have that function in the integrand. Uh, I have a plus, uh, it'll wind up being a minus, a minus 3e to the negative 4t sine squared of 3t, which is again a, uh, a multiple of one of the functions in the integrand. But then there's an additional third function, e to the negative 4t cosine squared 3t. So I'm going to need to include that as in my set B so that the, when I take the derivative of 
these functions, um, they, the derivatives are all linear combinations of these functions in the set B. And I can just verify that. If I take the derivative of each one, I can see that they are linear combinations of functions in the set B. And then I can use those coefficients to write out what their coordinate vectors are. And just as a reminder, uh, we're using e to the negative 4t cosine squared theta. That That is our first function. Then e to the negative 4t sine squared of 3t. That's our second function. And then the third function is e to the negative 4t sine of 3t cosine 3t. So we'll write the uh, components as the coefficients in that order. So in our first the derivative of the first function, I have a negative 4 coefficient on e to the negative 4t cos squared 3t. There is no sine squared term. And then I have a negative 6 on e to the negative 4t sine of 3t cosine 3t. And I do the same for the derivatives of e to the negative 4t sine squared 3t and e to the negative 4t sine of 3t cosine 3t. So again, those coordinate vectors of the image functions, those will be the columns of our matrix representation. Uh, we'll go ahead and use uh, technology to calculate the uh, inverse of uh, this matrix. So the, the inverse would then represent be a matrix representation of taking the antiderivative. And since our integrand uh, was a linear combination of our functions in B with negative 3 on the sine squared term and negative 2 on the sine of 3t cosine 3t and no cosine squared term. So that's why we have the 0, then the negative 3, then the negative 2. So if I multiply our inverse times the component vector or coordinate vector for uh, that function, uh, then my result will be the coordinate vector of the antiderivative. So I can go ahead and um, Somehow I made a mistake here. That is not the correct answer. Let's go ahead and fix that. I should be able to fix that. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and cut out the correct one. Put that on the clipboard. Let's go back and remove that in the right place. There we go. Now that is correct. When you form this matrix vector product, this is the correct answer, and those would be the coefficients on our antiderivative. So if I want to find the antiderivative of this function, Based on that uh, multiplication by the inverse, I would get this antiderivative.